party, mix the Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Thank you very much. So as Arthur mentioned, my name is Julie McMurray and I am the regional manager for the Central Regional Office of the Alzheimer's Association. And um, we are part of the Massachusetts, New Hampshire chapter of the Alzheimer's Association. Um, our main office is in Watertown. And then we have regional offices in Springfield, Worcester, Raynham. Bedford, New Hampshire, and Lebanon, New Hampshire. And then we are part of the National Alzheimer's Association based out of Chicago, and there are chapters in every single state. Our mission at the Alzheimer's Association is to enhance care and support for people living with Alzheimer's disease, their families, their caregivers. We also are the largest funder of research. I'd really like to be out of a job someday. Um, and then we also educate people on ways to reduce your risk for developing Alzheimer's. So in a nutshell, we know that there are over 5 million Americans living with Alzheimer's disease. And if you live, leave here today knowing one thing, it really is our 24-hour, 7-day-a-week helpline. It is a free service that is available to you no matter what time you call, you will speak to a human person. And that helpline really is the gateway to other services. We do a lot of informational referrals. We do a lot of education. We know that people can live with Alzheimer's 8 to 10 years on average, but some people live well over 10 years. And our mission really is to create a world without Alzheimer's, but until that time, we want to be there providing support and education. One thing about Alzheimer's disease we often talk with families about is being proactive, getting information. I'm a big believer in that knowledge is power, and if you have the right information, you can make good decisions for your loved one. So we want families to give us a call when you're brand new to the diagnosis or when you're concerned about your loved one, but also throughout the disease process. So we can provide you with support, help you navigate some of the resources. Um, these people on our panel um, tonight are, all of their agencies and facilities are in our database. And what we do when someone calls that helpline is if they need a home care agency or a nursing home or assisted living facility or their local access uh, home care agency, what we do is we give you those um, several um, of those contacts and then we educate you on what to look for in a nursing home, in uh, a memory care unit, um, what questions to ask. So that when you go and visit a nursing home, and specifically an uh, Alzheimer's care unit, you'll leave knowing, yep, this is a great place for my family. So, and we do a lot of advocacy work at the Alzheimer's Association. And about eight years ago, we passed standards of cares for assisted livings um, that said they offered uh, memory care neighborhoods so that when you go into a, an assisted living facility, there are standards of care, staffing, activities, the environment um, that are laws. And we recently did that for nursing homes. So there are standards of care for facilities that have Alzheimer's care units, okay? A lot of else what we do for families is we provide education understanding what it is like to be living with Alzheimer's disease in the early stages as well as the middle and late stages. So we want to partner with families, but we know at the Alzheimer's Association that it really is a team approach. So we want families to connect with us, but we also want you to connect with other community resources. Um, I brought a lot of information with me here tonight. Again, if you leave here, um, with our helpline card, that is really the gateway to services. I should mention that all of our programs at the Alzheimer's Association are free of charge. 
and we're able to do that because we have our um, biggest fundraiser and our biggest public awareness event, and it's actually coming up on Sunday, September 28th at Quincy Community College. It is called the Walk 10 Alzheimer's. And money's raised at that local walk, come right back into the community and also support the research that's being done. So at the end, I'm going to be more than willing to answer any questions, um, but also feel free to take some of our information when you leave tonight. Thank you very much, Julie. You can take so that's the Alzheimer's Association. It's just really important that you know them. And I think one of the themes that I really want to emphasize is if you've got these kinds of worries about this, you know, you, may, you know somebody, maybe this is going to be in the future, learn about them now. Learn about them now. You don't want to be in an emergency situation trying to hustle around and get information from them. So we talked about the nursing home, and we talked about how you can qualify for Mass Health if you need to do that, but that's kind of like the last resort for a lot of folks. But what about if you want to stay at home? That's really Frank and Mary's goal. What about if you want to stay at home? Well, in interestingly, there are actually a lot of programs now designed to keep Mary at home. Um, but the people who know about them and really administer all of them, the great gatekeepers regarding the biggest programs and government programs that will help Frank keep Mary at home are the folks at Bay Path Elder Services. Right? So I wanted to have them talk about that because once again, 20 years ago when my mother was going through this, th th these pro none of these programs existed. But now, as long as you have at least two AD, need with assistance with at least two AD, ADLs, and you're medically qualified for nursing home care. And by the way, you know who decides whether you're medically qualified for nursing home care? They do. As long as, as, long as, as you are medically qualified, then the services that you need, the home care and other services that you need in order to stay at home, will be, it be paid for by MassHealth as long as you meet some, medi some financial criteria, and we're going to talk about those. But you know who decides what that package of services is for which Medicaid will pay? The Bay, Bay Path Elder Services. They decide. As I said, you want to be their friend. So Nancy Stevens is here from Bay Path Elder Services so that she can kind of talk to you about them, about some of these programs. About, you know, kind of about what they offer. Then I'll talk to you a little bit about financial qualifications after she does that. Nancy? Hi, I'm Nancy Stevens from Bay Path Elder Services. I work in the Information and Referral Department. And um, some of you may be familiar with Bay Path already, but um, Bay Path, as Arthur had said earlier is a nonprofit private agency and we contract with the state of Massachusetts to provide services um, home care for people at home. Um, for someone who has Alzheimer's um, in particular um, would automatically qualify for home care services. The basic home care program is three hours um, of service per week. If a person is in late stage Alzheimer's, um, you might want to um, apply for the frail elder waiver. If the person is not on MassHealth, what they would need to do is fill out a MassHealth application, and we would have a nurse come from Bay Path to do a, to do the clinical evaluation. In order to qualify clinically, as Arthur was saying, the person would need one skilled nursing need and um, two activities of daily living needs. Um, and as far as the Mass Health application, the um, they can have two thousand one hundred sixty-three dollars. I don't know if I'm quoting the exact figure of income per month, but they can't have more than $2,000 in assets. So in that, for the frail elder waiver, we oftentimes will um, suggest that a person speak to an elder law attorney. The elder law attorneys can help to um, figure out how the person might spend down some of that money. Um, they can, um, they know more of the legal aspects of what the person can do to qualify financially for the frail elder waiver. 
the Mass Health application and the clinical eligibility have to have to be sent in together. Um, if a person's already on Mass Health, then it makes it a little bit easier in that they would only need the clinical eligibility, which means the nurse would come out and do the evaluation in the person's home. Um, another program is the personal care, attend personal care attendant program, PCA program. Again, the person would have to be on Mass Health. But then in this situation, they can hire um, somebody that they want to hire and have them paid. But they wouldn't be using the home care agencies that Baypath um, contracts with, but they can hire somebody that they want and, and have that person paid to help um, provide their needs. Um, I'm going to go to the, okay. So um, the home care program can also provide help with Meals on Wheels if a person wants to get Meals on Wheels in the home. Um, medical transportation is another, um, although if somebody is on Mass Health and Frail Elder Waiver, they can get um, transportation through Mass Health. Um, and again, we, I had already said that if someone, even if someone is under 60 years of age with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease, they would qualify for BayPath services. I should go back and say that the home care basic program generally is for people who are 60 years of age and older. But this is an exception if somebody has Alzheimer's. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, we also have a caregiver program, and um, I brought a lot of flyers. They're, they're in the back on the table. The, um, we have a caregiver specialist on staff who can work with the um, caregivers and provide resources and support. Um, there's, a, there's a whole um, list of caregiver support programs, and there is an Alzheimer's um, caregiver support group right here in Northboro um, through Home Instead. So, but there are um, Alzheimer caregiver programs all around the state of Massachusetts. Um, okay. So I just spoke about the caregiver program. Um, and there is no charge to the caregiver. And there is a, I brought this flyer on the Caregiving Metro West, and there's a website, and you can look on the website, and it has a lot of resources and um, information there. And also, as I said, there are other flyers and um, brochures in the back. Thank you very much, Nancy. And, and remember that website. This is just, a, this is a great, oh, you can take that. Okay. This is a great website. 